of Christ. Good evening, Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Glory be to God on this beautiful night. Let's take a few minutes to pray for those that are without because we got some that are thankful, but we got some that may be mourning because this is their first Thanksgiving without their loved one. So Father, I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you would lift that person up, Lord God. Father God, you said that they who are strong can bear the infirmities of those that are weak. So Father God, I'm just saying a special prayer right now, Lord God, for that person who is mourning in Zion because they don't have their loved one in this Thanksgiving season. And Father, we thank you for lifting them up, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for strengthening them. We thank you, Lord God, that they are loved by you, oh God. We give you the glory and the honor that is due your name right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you, Lord God. So lift them up, oh God. Be their comforter, God. Strengthen them, Lord God, in the name name of Jesus, Father God, and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for their peace. We thank you for their joy. We thank you for their strength. We thank you for their happiness, Lord God. We thank you that they are not alone, oh God, because they have the Holy Spirit, which is a comforter unto them. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the time that you got to spend with them. Hallelujah. Thank you for every Thanksgiving you got to share with them. And praise God for you still being amongst the living. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Thanksgiving, oh, give thanks unto the God of God. For his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords. Glory be to God. Give thanks unto him that has brought you out of the storm. Give thanks unto him if he is carrying you through your storm in life. Amen. Give thanks to him that prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. Glory be to God. Oh, give thanks unto our Lord and Savior on tonight. Give thanks unto Jesus on tonight. Give thanks unto the true and living God on tonight. Amen. Glory be to God. In John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Is there anybody out there that is thankful that you have eternal life? Thank God because you have eternal life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. We thank you for life on tonight. Thank God because he loves you. Yes. If you don't feel love, know that the Holy Spirit loves you. Jesus is love. And 1 John 4 and 8, for God is love. And if you have love, you have God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you be to God. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you, Father God, for those who are tuning in on this virtual service at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Amen. We pray, Lord God, that the word is brought forth without any hindrance, backed by your anointing on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let every word be established in our hearts on tonight, right upon the tables of our hearts as we receive you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, open up our spiritual ears so that we are able to hear and be attuned to what you are saying in the spirit on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Cancel every demonic force that seeks to interrupt 
the spreading of the gospel this day in Jesus' name. Touch each and every one heart on tonight that is open to receive of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Clear our minds and hearts with a clean slate so that we can hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Amen. We give you all honor on tonight. We give you all glory. That is due your name, Lord God. We say a special prayer for everyone without family on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Letting you know that you are not alone. For God is with you to comfort you with his love on tonight. Amen. Also, Father... We would like to say a special prayer for those are in need that Jehovah Jireh would be their provider so that they would have food, shelter, and be loved with the love of Christ. Praise God, because I want to put a clap of praise on that, glorifying God, because you might got food on your table, you might have shelter, and you might know that you're loved by God, but it might be somebody over the airway that needs the love of God on tonight and is praying for a plate, hallelujah, Jesus, or for shelter in the name of Jesus, God. We believe that word to be accomplished. Hallelujah, God. Also, a special request for supernatural manifestation for Shekinah Glory Powerhouse in the areas of wealth, finance, abundance, above all that we could ever ask or think according to your word. Overflowing, bountiful blessings, we command you to come in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It is in the precious son of Jesus name that we do pray. Amen. And it is so we believe for wealth and riches to be in Shekinah glory powerhouse body of Christ. Shekinah glory powerhouse is a blessed place. And because we are a blessed place, we also are a blessing. Glory be to God. So praise the Lord because this is a blessed place. Praise God because you came in tune to a blessed place on tonight. And body of Christ, be blessed on tonight. Remember to be thankful and be an example of God love. Body of Christ, be blessed. Amen. Exalt his name. Come on, exalt God's name. Bless the name of the most high God. For God is worthy of our praise. God is worthy of the honor. He is so worthy. I just want you to look around. And if you believe it, don't say it unless you believe it. But if you believe it, look around at somebody. And even if you're by yourself, just say it in the room. And if you believe this, just say, God loves me. If you believe it, say it again, God loves me. I believe that God loves me. And I had promised him, I say, you know, ordinarily on Wednesdays before Thanksgiving, I don't teach long. I don't, you know, I mean, I don't try to just hold them here because I know they're trying to do their thing. But I said, Lord, you know your people. And 2020 is a year where they'll be burning their hands on the oven racks and trying to look back at the service. <laughs> so let me just speak with brevity, God. Give me clarity, give me understanding, but most of all, give me your anointing that I'll be able to reach your people. So Father God, I pray tonight that you will bless your people, God, that you give them ears to hear what you're saying in the spirit. I thank you, God, that you're gonna write upon the tables of their hearts. I give you that praise, that honor, and that glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Abbreviated Declaration of Faith, the Word of God. It's what I stand upon. My faith is ever growing. You may be seated. God loves me. And I want somebody that's finding themselves in a semi-dark place right now to just meditate on what I'm saying. Just because... The cloud blocks the sun 
does not mean that the sun is not shining. So simply because perspective have been taken away from you, remain hopeful, remain joyful, but most of all, know that God loves you. I have to put this out and it's not a disclaimer, but I do have to put it out that it's going to be hard for a person hearing in the natural or a person hearing in their carnal mind to grasp the concepts of what the Holy Spirit is saying tonight. Because I'm appealing to the spiritual side on the inside of you, that which those who have been born again realize that God is talking to them. So there will be parallels and there will be times that you may go back and some things relationally in your natural life may come up on your mind, but God has given us a spiritual way of escape. So I'll start with this question here. Have you ever found yourself in a relationship saying, he or she doesn't love me the way that I love them? Well, when this happened, it means that your definition of love carries the weight of that relationship. Because you're trying to go based upon your perception, what you perceive love to be. I don't believe that it's necessarily a sign of your insecurity to affirm one love towards you. Simply because you ask them a question, do you love me? <laughs> I remember just reading some stories in the Bible about love. But I want to talk to a people, a person who knows that they have empty emotion. They have emotion, but they're empty. They have a heart, but it's hollow. And for whatever reason, they can't find joy, nor peace, nor happiness. They can't go anywhere. I want to tell you tonight that God is love. And that God loves you. And for that emptiness that you have, God will fill it. For that hollowness that's in you, God said, let me heal you so that I can pour my love into you. You know, asking someone, do, you do they love you? It's nothing new. Over in the book of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. So, verse 15, so when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He says unto him, feed my lambs. Remember, we're talking about God's love. Somebody say love. love. Say it again, love. love. Say it again, strong, love. Love connotes a sense of caring, but it mandates action. He said, feed my lamb. He asked him a question that didn't seem like feed my lamb would go with it. Am I right? Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than the rest of these that you're looking around at? He said, feed my lamb. He said, act on it. In other words, he's telling us, do not let a passive answer speak our passion or our dedication. Do not, do not let the passiveness of an answer be the basis for you drawing a conclusion. Just because somebody answer you does not mean they gave you the truth. I'm going to teach it. Love is more than out of words. Love is mandated. Love heals. Love forgives. But love will also be that test of authenticity of who you really are. Love acts, and it carries appropriate pursuit and passion. 
John 21, 16, he, he goes a little further. He says unto him the second time. Somebody said two times. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more? He says unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He says unto him, feed my sheep. Remember now, he asked him the question, what? Twice. The first time he said, feed my what? Lambs. The second time he said, feed my what? So we have to be able to distinguish that just because somebody asking us something doesn't mean the answer that they're really pushing is the same question that you heard. Are y'all hearing me? And we know that the second time someone asks us something, it would generally frustrate us. Am I right? But the expectation of the one posing the question, which was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it was different. That's why it's imperative that as a person, you learn to listen as well as speak and not be so quick to draw conclusions based on presumed repetition. Are y'all hearing me? Verse 17, he says unto him the third time. I'd say three times. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Now, we see <laughs> emotions start to erupt. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him what? Feed my sheep. Come on, tell the truth. You know in the natural, by the time somebody asks you the same question three times, you ready to say something. I, I wish I had real people. Am I right? But Peter, with more sorrowful contrition, was hitting his heart because he knew Jesus knew things. And he said, you already know the answer to that, but you're asking me. And I wonder... How many times we really know the answer, even though sometimes when you pose the question with love, it's not a favorable answer that you give to yourself. I wish I had real people out here. Am I right? Sometimes you know that the, the person is lying to you. Am I right? But you ask a pertinent question relative to love. And the reason that you were able to get a lie it's because most people don't understand that the foundation of true love is spiritual. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Are y'all hearing me? You know what? Love is spiritual and it carries a spiritual component with it. First John 4 and 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. 1 John 4 and 16, going a little further in the same passage. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. So twice in the same chapter, we hear that God is what? And God is the what? Spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in so sometimes we have to have a truth about love. And the truth about love will always be messed up if you're empowering a human to define what love is to you. If you have been born, I am not teaching good. I'm not teaching good, but I'm going to teach it tonight. Because I told you the corner man can't hear what I'm saying. The flesh man can't hear what I'm saying. But the spirit man understands what I'm saying. He knows that God is saying, you all messed up because you empowered a man more than you did me. That's what God is saying to you. You gave a woman too much power. You gave a man too much power. Are oh, y'all hearing me? He continues, he said, he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. 
Well, if God is love and he said we are supposed to be like him in this world, then we have to be a picture of what? Love. We have to be full of what? We have to demonstrate what? Tell your neighbor, love is spiritual. Tell them love is mandated. Love heals. But most of all, love forgives. Verse 18 says, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. In other words, if there's trepidation, if, 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 if you're scared, if, if you don't have that certainty, that confidence in the love that you're talking about, it's not a mature love, which means that it's not a spiritual love. It will be a carnal or fleshly love. Am I making sense? And so a carnal love and a fleshly love will mess you up. Tell your neighbor that. Because you're going to follow the flesh. Huh? And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You see, when you're following carnal love or when you're following fleshly love, oftentimes you're running to rejection. And that rejection will contaminate your perception. Your mouth will open and say something like this. I thought that they loved me. But then there are others who operate in something that I like to call self-rejection. They don't even know why they're not happy. But no matter what comes up, they feel like the whole world is against them. Nobody loves them. That's self-rejection. You're rejecting yourself, especially if you've been born again, because if you've been born again, you have the spirit of love on the inside of you. And the spirit of love will give you confidence in who you are in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but who you are in yourself. When you foster self-rejection, it's going to contaminate your ability to perceive or give love. Romans 12 chapter verse 9 says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. And the word there, he's saying, let your love be sincere. That's all it's really saying in the first part. Can't never be real with it. Don't fool people. Be real with it. Are you hearing me? Because remember, for as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons or daughters of God. And so when we understand that, we start letting love come to the forefront. Am I, am I doing okay? But here, we have to understand something. As long as love is an emotion, it will wreck you. Are <laughs> oh, y'all hear me? I said, as long as love is an emotion, it will wreck, wreck you. In 1 John 4 and 19, it says we love him because he first loved us. Verse 20 says, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. But he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Tell you, this is a season of love. This is a season of forgiving. This is a season of being healed by understanding what true love is. This year for Thanksgiving, we should all give emphasis on love being at the center of our hearts and minds. Because love does not conspire, it inspires. Love does not boast, it encourages others. Love ushers gratitude and thanksgiving on the scene. It's an usher form. When, 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 when you really love God, my goodness, you can't wait to show somebody how thankful you are 
for your God, for your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, by the, for the leading and the unction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to stop and just pause and remember where you were in life and then just say, God, you loved me, and for that I say, thank you. You love me, and for that, I say thank you. Because love takes time to reflect. And it's not so quick to reject. The Bible tells us in Matthew, the 24th chapter, verses 12 and 13. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Remember now, endurance is the ability to extract internal fortitude and strength so that you're able to go through a process, test, or trial. So he's saying, when you're able to endure love, real love, somebody said real love. Real love. love that's not conditional, my goodness. Love that's not manipulative, uh, but the love of Christ the love that constrains, the love that orders proper and right behavior, the love that make you say, you know, in other words, you're not going to be deceitful to the one that you're sitting there saying it to because you really, really care. Come on now. You really, really feel the love of Christ for that person. Hello, somebody. So you have a Christian love brings a conviction. Oh, y'all don't like me right now. See, people of God, we must have love. But first of all, if there's no self-love, how can we have love one for or towards another? John 13, verse 34, 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have loved one to another. One to another. Reach with your hands. Say one, two. Now reach. I got to be able to touch you. Tell them I got to be able to touch you with the love of Christ and stop touching you with my mouth. See, many people are saved because we're in the same fellowship. I, I love you. You're my brother. You're my sister in the Lord. You're my pastor. I love you. I love you. But, but the love of Christ is not there. It is the mouth that's reaching. Come on now. And not the love that's directed one towards another. When Christian love bring that conviction, that that passionate pursuit, it also brings an eviction. It will remove hostility. It will remove envy. It will remove strife. It will remove jealousy. Y'all don't like me right now, but a real church would be excited around about that. This word ain't meant to convict you. I mean, I'm sorry to condemn you. It will convict you. See, when a real word come, you ought to be like one who surrenders if the police or somebody is out. Yeah, I just got to go with it. I'm guilty. Oh, yeah, I got to go with it. Somebody say, I got to go with it. In other words, you have an eviction because you have to remove blockers and negative things that come to take away from you. You have to cut it off before it can get a foothold, before it can gain life before it can overtake your heart before your mind can be renewed and when you're able to do that the fruits of the spirit will live in you somebody say love peace joy long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance they will live on the inside of you why because you are a container of love. My goodness. Have you ever been in a store shopping around and 
you happen to go over to the perfume, the colognes, whatever word you use, and, and you get there and you start sniffing. And you mess around and you run across one and you'd be like, whew, why would anybody sell that? Huh? Sometimes when people come and they are able to get the fragrance of your love, does it really smell like the love of Christ? Remember, because love is a mandate. Real love is not an option, it's a mandate. John 3, 16, for God so what? Love the world that he what? Gave what? His only begotten son. Jesus came as part of a mandate. The predetermined counsel of God mandated that he come, that our sins be forgiven, that our hearts would not stay in the condition that they were in, but we would take on a new heart that we would take on a new mind, that we would understand that people would cross us, but we would have the maturity, somebody said maturity, we would have the maturity to step away from our emotion because those, those, those fleshly emotions, those carnal emotions will cripple us in our spiritual growth. And so the enemy uses that for paralysis. He uses that to stop us. He uses that to hurt us. He uses that to get his show going. Are y'all hearing me? But God wants you to know. I say God wants you to know. He wants you to know. He wants you to know that everything, are you hearing me? That he put on the inside of you. But for such, my goodness, a time as this. God didn't need an epidemic. Or he didn't need a pandemic. He didn't need COVID-19 to get your attention. All he wanted to do is get your attention. He said, can you hear, my goodness, uh, what the Spirit is saying to the church? Uh, can you hear God saying, I love you, but I love you first. Uh, and I want the same kind of love uh, that I was willing to send my son on your behalf, I want that same kind of love when you look at your brother or your sister, don't look at them with disdain. Don't look at them upset. Don't look at them talking about you can't stand them. You got to look at them with the love of Christ. Are you here willing to give over, willing to suffer, willing to go through so that your brother or your sister can have the love of Christ extended toward them? No one is perfect. Are oh, y'all hearing me? Somebody say C, T, F, S. Say it again. C, T, F, S. Choose to forgive someone. Purpose in your heart that in this season of Thanksgiving, I'm not going to wait to Christmas. I'm going to be thankful enough that God took the time to tell me he loves me. But his love only empowers me as I forgive others. So we take the time and we open our mouths and we say out of a real heart, not, not words. Because you know how many times people have told me, oh, they forget oh, what, and I'd be like, I didn't know what you were giving them for. But anyway, thank you. Are you hearing me? When it's right and it's spirit driven, God will get some glory out of it. And what are you saying, Pastor Davis, in your short sermon or word tonight? What I'm saying is this, is that you came in hollow hearted. Your emotions didn't have any life to them. Are you hearing me? Matter of fact, your emotions was in ICU. But God sent me with the Ruah and the Numa to give somebody spiritual CPR tonight to tell them everything. Like a little bullshit now. Everything for the one who will believe God is going to be all right. Not only do you want God to breathe on you, you want God to breathe into you. The breath of life. You want him to breathe into you the love of God. This is what we must have. Saints, we can't faint. In this our day of adversity, 
Are y'all hearing me? He said, I want you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. God is not interested in us flipping words. God is not interested in us talking about we don't know what somebody else did to us. God is not interested in that. He's interested in us taking a position like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We can't in this season stay empowered by our ignorance. We got to be endued with power from on high. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, he said, I'm going to reject you. God said, you, you can choose to always be the same. But that's exactly who and what you're going to be. The same. Unloving. When you're unloving, that means you're also incapable of being loved. <laughs> Unforgiving. So when you haven't forgiven, you can't be forgiven. So the enemy has already trapped a lot of you all minds with this, you know, carnality and these fleshly thoughts about, you know, your empowerment because somebody crossed you. Are y'all hearing me? Tell somebody, get it together. Get it together. Because he loved you. You have to take it personally. God loves me. Say it again, God loves me. Now take ownership of it. Take ownership of it again. Take ownership of it one more time. Because when you know that God loves you, you know that what he said. You're going to hear and do. You're not going to just play it off. You're not going to sit there and look at the, the, uh, some half copied notes that you made. You're not going to sit there and talk about, I wish Pastor made a CD. You're not going to blame me. What you're going to do, if you want to know what God is really saying about love in about a day and a half, you're going to go on C-O-T-P-O-H, and you're going to look on the website, or you're going to look on YouTube, am I right? And you're going to pull down what God loves me. Say it again, God loves me. Father God, we thank you for your word that you've given to your people tonight. We thank you, God, that that grace and that mercy has come to the forefront. But God, you've given a mandate during this season. And you told us, God, that we are to love others like we want to be loved. And we are to show grace toward others the way we want you to show grace toward us. That we are to be merciful toward others the way we want you to show us mercy. So it's in that power, it's in that understanding that we say, Lord, we thank you. That we have understanding that we can live. And we live empowered by the spirit of love. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Happy Thanksgiving to you tomorrow. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Have a blessed day. God bless you. Faith, person.